Well, every Christmas, my mom gives me a special ornament. She gives it to us right around Thanksgiving, either sends it in the mail or she's in town for Thanksgiving. She wants to give it to us ahead of time, of course, so that we can get it on the tree and enjoy it the entire Christmas season. But these ornaments that she gives are special because it's something that reminds her of me or something that captures something special that has happened over the past 12 months. So here's some pictures of some of the ornaments that I've received over the years. So you've got a unicycle, because I've ridden unicycles in the past. I was actually in a performance where I was riding a unicycle and juggling at the same time while dressed as a clown. Woohoo! Your pastor, yes. Velvet and I, yeah. When we got married, you know, this it reminds us that we're actually married. All right, so we have that. This is a, my, my first job, uh, the year that I had my first job as a computer programmer at USA Insurance. My mom sent me that. Golf shoes, you know, I used to golf quite a bit back in the day in business days. Uh, Greek physique, that's, that was way back in the day when I was built more like Heath and, and, and all that back in the day. And then this is guitar. It's been around for a long time since 91, as you can see on here. Uh, strings are broken on it, but we keep putting it up on the tree just because I love playing the guitar. So... My mom gives, me, gives all of us really special ornaments uh, just to remind us of how special we are and just the special things that have happened that year. And I'm just reminded that the Lord does the same for us. He gives us ornaments, really memories and reminders of how special we are. Christmas reminds us of the greatest, I don't know if we can call Jesus an ornament, but he's a reminder, Christmas is a reminder that Jesus came, we're so special that he would come for us to rescue us, to save us, to redeem us. Other ornaments or reminders throughout your year might be healing. Maybe there's a healing that's happened this year. That's an ornament, a reminder of of the love of God. Maybe freedom from something that's just been all over you. Maybe a restored relationship. Whatever it might be, God has done some special things for you this year. Maybe it's he's just taught you perseverance. What it means to wait and to trust him. But this we know, that Jesus has come and he loves you. And all of us who are in Christ, who know him as our Lord and Savior, We have something that can never be taken from us, and that's eternal life in him, the greatest gift of all, and something we all need to make sure we're always reminded of. We live out of that reality. Well, last Sunday, we concluded a three-week journey of discovering God's vision for Evident Life Church. After all, we are a people of prayer, pursuing God, and loving others. A people of prayer, pursuing God, and loving others. God's vision for us is ultimately wrapped in love. We talked about that last week. His love for us, which results in us giving His love to others. Last week was a divine launch, and I think I mentioned it last week. It was really a divine launch. It wasn't planned. It wasn't, you know, strategized ahead of time, but it was a perfect launch into the Christmas Advent season as we talked about love. Because at the core, Christmas is all about what? It's all about love. It's all about love. Because of love, Jesus came down, and because of his love, we go out and we love others. This is the story of Christmas. And so because of love, heaven came down, and that's the title of today's message. Because of love, heaven came down. The love of Christmas wasn't a distant love. It wasn't God, you know, staying far from us and just pitying us from a distance. The love of Christmas, the love of Christmas is a up close and personal kind of love. Not just a bunch of happy thoughts or well wishes. The love of Christmas came down. And that's the first point that I want to make sure that we dive into today. And that's that love came down. Turn with me to 1 John. 1 John chapter 4, beginning in verse 9. This is how God showed his love among us. He, meaning God, sent his one and only son into the world. Extremely important. God sent his son, Jesus, into the world that we might live 
through Him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Christmas reminds us that love came down. Love didn't remain in heaven far off. Love came down. Love got up close and personal right in our grill. And that's a good thing. Love came down. Because of love, Jesus, the perfect Son of God, the divine one, the righteous one, he left his place of glory. He came to the earth that he created. The earth that he created perfectly, but then we broke because of sin. Yet, the perfect one comes down to an imperfect world. He left the riches of heaven and he became poor. He left a throne for a manger, a palace for a barn. He walked away from the glorious singing of angels, even even the amazing aroma of the presence of God of heaven, and he exchanged all of that beauty for what? A bunch of farm animals. Love came down. Love came down. He left the presence of his Father, surrounded by perfect love, for the presence of a world that hated him. But because of love, Jesus came down. This is the message of Christmas. Jesus came to the world that he created. We sang about that earlier, didn't we? In that song, Here I Am to Worship. That's a Christmas song. I know we sing it all the time, and we usually don't think about it as a Christmas song. But that's a Christmas song. We sang words like this, light of the world. It's talking about Jesus in that song. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. The light of the world, Jesus himself stepped down out of heaven and he stepped onto this earth that's filled with darkness. King of all days, it says in the second verse, so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above, but he didn't stay in heaven above. It says, humbly you came to the earth You created all for love's sake. You became poor. Jesus stepped down from his place of glory in heaven. Love came down for you and for me. This is the message of Christmas. Love is not distant. It's personal. It's present. Love leaves the safety and comfort of home to rescue us. Here's an example of leaving the comfort of home to rescue others. Let's run this video. see it from here. What? Home. Dunkirk, an epic rescue mission during World War II, where people left the safety and comfort of their own homes 
to rescue others who are in need. They put themselves in danger, in harm's way, believing that they would probably die to rescue those in need. But as epic as this World War II rescue mission was, it pales in comparison to the rescue mission performed by Jesus when he left his home for us. When we were stranded, when we were as good as dead, love came down. There was no way out. There is no way out. But Jesus, the Son of God, the Divine One, leaves His perfect home at the right hand of the Father. And He embarks on a rescue mission to save us from certain death. Love came down. And Jesus is coming after you too. I hope you know that. It's a message of Christmas. Jesus is coming after you to rescue you. He's coming after you to save you, to set you free, to forgive you. He's coming after you to spend time with you. And not just a few moments, but he wants to spend eternity with you. Love came down. The rescue mission is in full force. He's coming. He's still coming after you and after me. Isaiah captures it this way. I love the writing of Isaiah as he gives the word of the Lord, the prophetic word of the Lord. Isaiah says this. It's really God says this through the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 43, verses 2, verses 4 through 7. He says, when you pass through the waters, how many of you have passed through, passed through some waters? How many of you maybe are, are passing through some waters right now in life? Some waves. Maybe it even feels like a tsunami. But when you pass through those waters, God says, I will be with you. Not far off, not just watching from a distance saying, well, I, I hope they make it, but I'm pretty comfortable right here. No, God says when you're walking through those waters, when the waves are crashing down on you, God says, I'm not far off, but I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire." Been there, right? Done that. Walk through the fire. But when we walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. And since you are precious and honored in my sight, there's an ornament for you right there to take and hang on your tree. Since you are precious and honored in my sight, God says, and because I love you, I will give men in exchange for you and people in exchange for you your life. Verse 5, God continues, he says, do not be afraid, for I am with you. I'm not far off. I'm not looking through a telescope at you right now. I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather them from the west. And I'm keeping reading because I believe this is a word for somebody here in the room today. I will bring your children from the east and gather them from the west. That's how close I am. That's how much I care for you. Someone needs to hear this. He says in verse 6, I will say to the north, give them up. And to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and whom I made. God is not far off. He's here. He loves us. And he is here with us in the middle of the storms, in the middle of the raging rivers, in the middle of, of the fires that are wanting to consume us. God is not far off. Love has come. Love is here. It's not distant. Christmas reminds us that love came down. But love goes further. Number two, love put on flesh. Love put on flesh. John 1. Beginning of verse 1, in the beginning was the Word. It's talking about Jesus. He's the Word. Capital W. In the beginning was the Word, Jesus. And the Word was with God at the right hand. He was right there in heaven with God. And the Word was God because Jesus is God. He was with God in the beginning, and through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. 
In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Verse 9, the true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. Then he was in the world, and through the world was made through him, and the world did not recognize him. He, speaking of Jesus, came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children not born of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. So this is what God did. The word Jesus became flesh. Jesus, the Son of God, at the right hand of the Father, God Himself, the Son, became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We've seen His glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father full of grace and truth. So Jesus, the Son of God, fully God, fully man, fully human. Divine and human. Christmas reminds us that when God came down, when love came down, that he didn't insulate himself from us. He didn't put on some kind of super force field bubble to protect him from the brokenness of this earth. Rather, he put on flesh. He became like you and like me. He put on the same thing that we wear. He became human. He went all in. He went all the way with this. That's love. It says in Hebrews 2.16, For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's Descendants. In other words, Jesus left heaven for us, for people, for mankind. For this reason, because he left heaven for us, he had to be made like his brothers, that's like us, in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. In other words, Jesus, to be the perfect sacrifice, to be the Lamb of God that would be slain, whose blood would cover the sins of the world now and forever for all who receive him as Lord and Savior. For that to happen, Scripture tells us in Hebrews, he had to put on flesh. He had to be made like us. He had to deal with life the way we deal with life on the same broken earth that was polluted because of the sin that we had committed as mankind. Because he suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Jesus didn't run away. He became like us. He put on flesh. This is the message of Christmas. Something that we all have to be reminded of. Sometimes we get this picture of God that he's just this lofty caricature almost, that he's just this far off power that just is kind of looking down and and he has come. And not only did he come to this earth, to this world, but he became like us. He's acquainted with, with the same things that we deal with. He was tempted in every way, Scripture says, yet was without sin. He didn't have a place to put his head either, John, as you were talking about homelessness. Scripture says, hated and despised and rejected, Ultimately murdered. That's how bad he was hated. But he went all in. He put on that flesh. And he endured for us. That's Christmas. 
That's love. He didn't run away. Remember the Moravians? We talked about them about three weeks ago or so when we were talking about being a people of prayer. Remember that group of people that started a prayer meeting and then they ended up praying for 100 years and out of that prayer meeting, they sent 300 missionaries around the world and impacted the whole missions movement worldwide? Well, check this out. Two of those Moravians, they wanted to go to a people. They wanted to, to reach a people that were unreachable. And the reason they were unreachable is because they were slaves. And the slave owner on this plantation, on this island, wouldn't allow any Christianity to be present. Why? Because he didn't want his slaves coming alive in Christ Jesus. He wanted to, to control them. So he wanted to keep Jesus away from them. He didn't allow any missionaries. He didn't allow any Bibles or anything. The only way to get on that island to reach those people would be to become like the people on that island, and that is to become a slave. So these two Moravians, they sold themselves into slavery. They sold themselves to that slave owner. They put on chains in order to go reach those who are in chains. This is love. This is what Christ did for us. He put on the chains of flesh in order to come and rescue us who are in chains of flesh. In order to set us free. He put on flesh. These Moravian missionaries, they actually even had to pay for their transport to the island even after giving themselves into slavery and putting on those chains. And they knew it was a lifetime, no turning back decision. Just like Jesus. No turning back. He's all in. That's love. That's Christmas. When those two missionaries were leaving, they made this statement. This is what motivated them. Check this out. They said, may the lamb who was slain Receive the reward of his suffering. That was their entire motivation. That's why they sold themselves into slavery. Why they put on chains for the rest of their lives to go rescue those and bring Jesus to those who are in chains. Why? Because Jesus is worthy of that kind of love. Because he gave that kind of love to us. And this is what Christmas reminds us of. That love is crazy, it's extravagant, and it goes all the way. It's not distant. It goes to those who need love. It'll put on chains, and it'll put on flesh. Christmas. It's beautiful. So Christmas reminds us that love came down, love put on flesh, but love keeps going. The third thing we learn about the love of Christmas is that love dwells with us. Love dwells with us, John 1.14. Again, the word became flesh and did what? Made his dwelling among us. Made his dwelling among us. We've seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father full of grace and truth. So, so Jesus came down. He came down, he put on flesh, and he made his dwelling among us. So the word dwelling. The original Greek, it actually means to set up a tent. Dwelling. So Jesus actually came down from heaven and he did something that would be really hard for me to do. And that is, is that he lived in a tent. I mean, figuratively speaking, you know what I'm saying. He made his dwelling. He set up a tent on this earth in order to rescue us. Now, a tent says two things to us. Number one, a tent is pretty temporary, isn't it? So Jesus was only going to be here temporarily. First time, we're going to get to that, okay? Hang with me. Hang with him. All right. So a tent, Jesus was only going to be here temporarily. When Jesus came to dwell on this broken earth, he just came for a season. He came to accomplish a very specific mission, a purpose. The earth was broken, and he came to rescue it. The earth, the broken earth that he came to 2,000 years ago, the broken earth that we still live in and on today, 
is not his home. It is his mission field. It's where he comes to bring new life and to set the captives free through the cross and the resurrection. But I believe the tent has another important significance. Jesus came to live among us and to be like us. See, Jesus didn't come to live in a palace. He didn't come to, the the word dwell doesn't mean to set up a palace or to construct a palace, you know, with walls and barbed wire and a a moat and and crocodiles and alligators to, to keep, you know, the riffraff, that's you and me, by the way, away from him. Jesus didn't come to set up a palace on this earth. He came to set up a tent so that he would actually dwell among us, live and be like us. He pitched a tent here to do life with you and me, to relate with you and me, to understand you and me, to to eat with us, to fellowship with mankind, to know us and to care for us. Jesus put on flesh to know our suffering and he came to dwell among us to be close to us, and to be available to us. It's one of my issues with going camping and being in a tent. I'm a little too available to the critters that are out there. You know what I'm saying? Well, Jesus came to dwell, to set up a tent so that he'd be available to the little critters, that's you and me, that are out here. This is the message of Christmas. Love is not far off. Love came to dwell among us. But the story of Christmas is not over. I want us to understand that. Sometimes we just think, oh yeah, Christmas is 2,000 years ago, and that was beautiful and awesome. But the story of Christmas continues today, and it is not over. It's not over. Jesus is coming back to once again dwell among us. But this time, he's not coming to live in a tent. This time, it won't be temporary. This next time when Jesus comes to actually dwell physically with mankind, it will be forever. Forever and ever and ever. Check this out. Revelation 21 says in verse 1, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Wrap your mind around that one. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Now check this out. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. There were no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven, that new heaven, from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now... Now, now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. But look at this. God is bringing heaven to us. He's not stepping down this next time to live on a broken world. The broken world is gone. There's a new earth, and he's bringing heaven to us, a new earth, to dwell with us now and forever on a new earth. It's not temporary, church. It's a forever deal. And it is the story of Christmas. Really, Christmas, in a lot of ways, it was even just a foreshadowing of still what is to come. We talked about his kingdom, right? About how his kingdom is now, but it's not yet. We have the now of the kingdom, but there's parts of his kingdom that are still yet to come. A new heaven and a new earth. Jesus dwelling with us, us with him forever. He's coming back, church. Because of love, Jesus came. And because of love, he's coming back. I want to end with this passage of Scripture, and I want to ask you to stand because we're going to sing this together. They're going to lead us in the singing, by the way. I'm just going to read the Scripture. Revelation 1, verse 7 says, Look! Come on, church. Get your eyes open. Open your eyes, your heart. Walk in faith and look and and, and live in this reality. Look, he, Jesus, is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him. Jesus is coming in the clouds and we will see him. It's Christmas time. Let's rejoice.